Okay, so we're putting the front of the house and we're making sure we get in there really, really good. Now, here's a little tip that I just saw. If and I'm going to show you. Grab your little wax, be waxing, and go in there and you can clean up some of that adhesive if you use your Xyron. I'm sure some of you guys already know that. Um, but you can go in there it makes it a lot easier to remove some of that gummy stuff without tearing up your paper or damaging it. And you just kind of run your finger in there and grab those little Grab those little snotty things and pull them out. Okay, same thing here on the door. See that? There's kind of gummy. But if you go gently on with your, your little wax buddy here, you can remove some of that gummy stuff. Make sure you burnish. And then, this is what I saw, is if you go in and just rub your finger before you peel it out, you remove that coating from the adhesive, and then when you peel it off, you might have a little bit here and there, but it wasn't as bad doing it that way. too much of a problem with my cutting by hand. I was a little worried about that. There's more of that gummy stuff. Okay. I guess I can just take my little Good. And then grab your little wax buddy here. Get some of that wax out. Okay. And then get your distress ink, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll be back. I'm going to grab a new daub. So because we added our little hinge, we have a little bit of an overlap here. So I'm just going to take it and pretend it's like, you know, distressed wood. It's like distressing anything and I'm just going to run my finger through it with a little bit of chalk paint, which is one of my favorite things to always use anyway. So we are going to run that through. I like it because it gives it a really more vintage distressed look like a worn down home. Okay. And then I'm going to go through with the Tim Holtz vintage photos and just go around those edges a little bit more and distress it more. Okay. Enough of that. Put that aside. All right, and it looks like I spilled some paint. So, not really hard to assemble, like I mentioned. Okay. So now we're going to take um, our dauber here and kind of get a new one, and I'm just going to distress. A little bit here and there. And I'm probably going to take some Mod Podge just because I like that look um, and I've done it before and it gets a really old crackled look in here and um, it'll help seal it a lot too. And I can go through with the distressing 
and make it really look old. And that's what I did. I don't know if you guys saw my other houses that I did last year, um, but that's pretty much what I did as well. I went through with the Mod Podge, sealed it up. with the Mod Podge and it just gives it a really nice look and appearance. Really weathered look. That's what you're trying to look for. Okay, so get your corners, your edges. They're really nice and distressed. that look. I really do. It looks awesome. All right. So close that up. Move that out of the way. Now the next thing we're going to apply are the shingles. And for the shingles we have all these pieces here. And um, I went ahead and cut that with my machine. And we should have 10 single shingles and a double sided one. Let's peel this off. And so you'll have 10 of these single ones. Maybe you can just peel off, and if you have a Xyron machine, of course. That was right the first time. And it's there we go. So I'm going to do that to all my shingles, and then we'll be. Okay, so the last piece we're going to do is this double sided one, and it has a score line. Um, so make sure you kind of score that down and score your paper as well. And then place it down. Oh, got it backwards. And kind of press down. This one needs a lot of help because this one has that score and you want to make sure it has a, you, if it lifts up because of the adhesive, just get you some of your liquid glue and give it a little bit of a assistance there, especially because it does have that score line. So again, varnish. And burnish. Just remember that because you have a score on your paper, um, you might want to make your paper just a tad bit, just a tiny tad tad bit, a little bit longer or wider. Um, just a tad bit, not too much. Okay, so now we have all the shingles done. They're a little sticky. And if you flip them around and you rub your finger in, you have these little tiny notches, right? Let me see my hands. Um, you see a notch right there. See that little, it's just a tiny little notch on each end. That is basically on each one that's where they're gonna sit and lay that's your like your little guideline okay 
that's basically where each piece is going to sit. I'm going to go ahead, I didn't clean these up with my little adhesive thing. Get, get all that gummy stuff out. And then grab your distress ink, and if you want, you can put a little bit of, you know, if you want, just if you want, a little bit of um, chalk paint. On certain areas to give it more of a shabbier look. So let me get some of that stuff off of me because y'all know how I feel about that. <laughs> okay. So let's distress this and um, I'm just going to grab my typical vintage photos and then just go around your edges and get a nice distress lines there. So I'll be back. Okay, shingles are done, and now we're going to start to attach them to the house. And again, use those little notches, and you're going to feel it when you run your finger through there. And that's your guideline as to that is going to lay right in there, tip to tip to that starting edge. And I'm just going to use. up to that little edge and I'm going to get plenty of glue in here. And you can actually see the little notch. You really can. But you can feel it as well. So press that down. Get it in there really good. And use your fingers to press down on it. Grab your next one and keep piling it in. You should have five for each side. And then that double-sided one goes on top of that. And I try to add a lot. Again, you'll feel this little notch is going to go to that tip. It's going to like sit on there. And then press down on it. I'm going to run your fingers through it. We'll do one side and then I'll do the other side off camera. But again, I'm going to press down on the next one. Notice I'm just putting it where that little notch is. That's your little guideline. Plenty of glue in there. And use that notch to line it to the edge of that one. And move it down. Kind of rub your finger, pressing down gently. Not too hard, or you're going to make your house collapse, which it shouldn't, but I'm saying. Just press down. Okay. 
press down and then when you get the fifth one on then you're going to do the other side and then do that those five and then the last one you're going to do is your double-sided one and we will do that one together so what we're going to do is we're going to lay this fifth one down and then i will go off camera and do the other five on the other side and then we'll be back and put the top on okay just like that so those are my five press down on it just kind of shifted that one You think you're brave enough you can do hot glue I'm not brave enough to do that because I don't want to ruin it okay so I'm going to go ahead and do the other five on this side and I will be back okay so I forgot to mention that when you get to the fifth one you want to move that one up just a tad bit up higher than the others just because um, six hinges was or six shingles a total of 12 um, on here before we put this one which would have been 14 was too much so you want to move the fifth one just a tad bit a little bit higher up than the rest so um, that way when you put the top shingle it'll fit perfectly around okay so just make a big note of that that your fifth one you want to move that one up just a tad bit higher than maybe about I don't know just kind of move it up maybe I would say from the notch to that edge about two eighth of an inch just to give you a good wiggle room to be able to put this hinge, this shingle on I keep saying hinge okay all right so now this is the final one and you're gonna put plenty of glue here to include on that crease Okay, I'm going to smack it down. And get your baby wipes to clean up any of the boo boos that might seep out. And then hold it in on the top of my glue cup here. And just kind of hold it a little bit in place there best that you can make sure that this hand is not cooperating with me okay. I don't know why I'm saying hinge it's a shingle 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 So hold that down and then we're going to add the shutters onto the house. We'll be back. So we have all these little shutters and we're just going to use some wet glue. And you're going to have to eyeball it at this stage to make sure that they all perfectly align. You might want to put maybe a ruler as a guideline maybe. I don't know if that will help you. Keep it all aligned. Go. Just so that you're not um, getting them all wonky. But the wet glue is about the best thing right now because you can ship them around if you're off. So we're going to do that with all these little shutters and another way that you can do these is you can paint them and just kind of like I'm doing now or you can just not do this part if you don't want to. It's your house you can do it however you want. Um, just thought I'd give it more character. I'm trying to make sure my blue is kind of a good guideline for those shutters. Okay, 
You could use hot glue, but you need that wiggle room to be able to move them around if they're a little off, like right there. And I just picked up, I thought this was really cute, the little floral one. I thought that was cute. So we're going to do this all the way around to the front and the back and the side. And um, we'll be back. So the next piece we're going to add, this is what goes on top of the door, just like that. And it has a score mark right there. So you're going to bend it just a tad bit. Now, um, I traced it on a piece of scrap paper. Um, but when you cut it, make sure you leave about an eighth of an inch on each side cutting um, because um, when you fold this one down, it's going to lift that up. So you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it in a straight line as I traced it. I'm going to go off about an eighth of an inch. So you're going to, if, if, if you want, just cut it cut this one which is I think a half inch or whatever it is with about an eighth of an inch on each side so actually it's three quarters of an inch wide and about three three and one quarter inch long so let's see if that works because what it is is when you fold this and you glue it on you lose a little bit so you want to make sure it kind when you're folding see that when you're folding and you just trim off all the extra depends on how you want it so go ahead and glue this down to this piece sloppy gluing but I'm starting to get tired here. Alright. So we'll go like that and fold it. So then you want to make sure you get that nice crease there. That nice fold. Just like so because that's gonna go over your door like that. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of my chalk paint and just go around that lip area. On the one side it's noticeable. You don't have to do the back side if you don't want to. And down here. And then you can cover um, this part here with paint or you can add another piece of paper, whichever you guys want. I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in. And again, you're not going to see this part back here, but you will see the sides, the front. Okay. So let that sit for a bit and then be back. Okay, so I put a bead of hot glue on that back, and then I'm going to go ahead and kind of eyeball it right on top of that door, just like so. And hold it in place, and then you can get your distress ink if you want. I distressed that a little. Should have distressed it before I put it on, but I wasn't thinking. It's it is like almost three in the morning here, but I wanted to get this done for y'all. Okay, so that's that. I attached the door. I have the shingles, and I have the shutters. Okay, now get some of this stuff out of my way.
Now the other thing that you have, and this one's a little bit more trickier, so if you guys want to cut this one apart and then just um, glue this one and then cut it apart. This is part of the chimney. Something like that's a little wonky. I don't know why it's wonky. Mm, right. But you can just cut it apart and then just glue it like I did the house. Um, I was just trying to make it easier, so I might just modify this here. So you have to glue the four corners together. So I went ahead and cut these these apart to make it easier for assembly. So when you get yours, just make sure. And then what you're going to do is you're going to glue, put your glue on this piece here, which is the one that almost looks like a pennant. And you're going to flush it to the inside of the longer one. Just like so. some pressure on it and then do the other one Put this side on this side So you're going to put it on top of the chipboard. What I'll do is I'll probably in the future just cut them out. And then again put a bead of glue on this side. Along the edge. Or you could put it on top. flushed on top of air. I was just trying to make it for you guys not to have to do these because these are a little bit maybe a little bit pain. Especially when it's it's one thing when it's a big piece, but when it's a little tiny piece if you're like me and you got clumsy little hands. Well I don't have clumsy little I don't have clumsy little hands. I have clumsy big hands. See? Apply some pressure. But not too much that it's going to make that fall apart like I just, I just did. So see? Let that sit for a little bit and then come back and put your paper on it. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, so I um, cut out a piece pieces of paper that were about one inch um, wide and attached it to the chimney. And I put some chalk paint around the edges of where they connected to make it more distress. And painted some 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 of the insides. Now we're going to attach that to the top. Okay. So you basically you can put this anywhere um, you want on the top of the house. Um, it's up entirely up to you. And I'm just going to find a home for it, and I'm going to use some hot glue. I'm be brave and use hot glue.
Yes, there you go. There it is. And so let's see what we have. Exacto because I'm done cutting, which is awesome. Put that away. Okay, so here's so far what we have on the house. I'm decorated, of course. Um, and then the last and final step that you're going to do before you decorate um, is that you're going to put it on its base. So that was the first thing we built, right? So then you're going to sit that, find a little place where you want it to sit. And then just use your liquid glue. I thought I was done with my liquid glue. I forgot I had to glue this down. So then use your liquid glue and adhere it to that base. So we're going to put a bead of glue around that edge. I'm off camera, I know, but I have to get it closer to me, so I do apologize for that. Once you can breathe, oof, I tell you that is hard. Go ahead and flip it and position it into place. And this is hard because you know you're trying to figure out where you want this house sitted, situated. So press down just slightly and get it to somewhat adhere to that base. Just make sure you don't flatten out your house and it crumbles. So press down on it. Get some good pressure down on there. If you're having a really hard time getting it in there, just go ahead and apply a little bit of bead glue, bead of hot glue, which is probably what I want to do, even though I really don't want to do that, but just a light, thin coat of it. Almost like just a really light coat of it. Nothing too much. And then we'll probably just go and cover a little bit of that with um, distressing. So just press down a little. Put that down. And I just put a small, it was just so light you really can't see it. That's how light I did it. Okay, so that will do that part. And then um, the next step would be for you to decorate it however you want. But that's just the basic assembly of it. Um, there is these little steps here because um, these extra little pieces is if you wanted to build some steps. Um, you can build a step, but you'll have to wait and see if it'll, it'll work. If it doesn't work, then, um, that's okay. But that's just a little, oops, you're not seeing. You don't see what I'm seeing. All right. So that is, if you wanted this little, these little pieces here is if you wanted to build like a little step or something on there, um, you could. So that wasn't really, um, 
all that needed. Let me see if I could tuck that one in. Yeah, see, it wasn't all that needed. So um, that will do it. And so then what I'm going to do is decorate it, and I'll do a um, tutorial on that later on in a week. Till next time, ladies. Bye-bye.